You have an, a really inspiring story. So you're, you're the director of prevention and wellness at St. Luke's Hospital. And while you have that great position, you were actually developing chronic disease in your own body. So you were had, developing high cholesterol, you were a little overweight, you were on borderline prediabetes, hypertension, you have all these problems, and then you stumble across a movie that yeah. changed life. I mean, tell us, tell us this story. Back before I was enlightened, um, you know, I, I, thought, I thought being healthy meant following a standard American diet based on kind of the old food pyramid that was, you know, low fat dairy, lean meat, fruits and vegetables, whole grains, all in moderation, try to get some exercise. And I, and I had tried to follow that. That's what I preached to my, to my patients. That's what we tried to, you know, encourage the employees at, at the hospital to, to, to do where I was uh, the director of prevention and wellness uh, for the employee wellness program. And, you know, I found personally I could get away with that if I exercised. And I had been an, uh, you know, on and off athlete through the years. I had run track in college and I had been an active runner in medical school, but then life kind of got in the way and, and I would have starts and stops. And then Unfortunately, uh, in July of 2011, I was playing with my dog and I tore my meniscus in my knee. And being a typical doctor, I, I waited about three months to get it fixed because I didn't have time. And then I didn't do the rehab. So, you know, now my knee is weak and I'm really having, struggling to get back to exercise because I'm not, I hadn't done the, the, the rehab like I was supposed to, like I said. And I started to put on weight. And, um, I slowly but surely became a patient. And as I started to engage in the healthcare system, my doctors treated me just like I treated my patients, right? So uh, the first thing that happened was, is I, I developed sleep apnea. So I went and saw a sleep doctor and I, I, I you know, got tested and sure enough, I have sleep apnea. So he prescribes this sexy machine thing I have to wear at night, the CPAP machine. You know, not once did he ever talk about my diet or my weight as playing a role. Um, and then um, that triggered an irregular heart rhythm. So I went and I got, I gathered up a cardiologist and he gave me some pills for my irregular heart rhythm. Not in, you know, it was connected to the sleep apnea, but again, never talked about my diet or exercise. Went to have a physical and lo and behold, my cholesterol was through the roof and I had metabolic syndrome, which uh, is a, is a pre-diabetic state uh, defined by, you know, high cholesterol, high triglycerides and a low HCL or good cholesterol. I had borderline blood pressure elevation my sugar was borderline. So, you know, the, the answer was to prescribe a, a statin medication. So, you know, I get this prescription. Again, no one ever engaged about, about diet. I, I mean, you know, the, the advice was you need to lose some weight and exercise more and then go get this prescription filled. You know, the exercise, advice, the dietary advice I got was really not operable at all. And uh, so, you know, something, I, I knew something needed to change, but I didn't know what it was because in the past when I would get a little – overweight, I would just go exercise more. I could kind of control it. But now I couldn't do that because of, because of my knee. Um, well, I'm laying on the couch one night, flipping through Netflix with this prescription in my wallet, and I stumble across this movie, Forks Over Knives. I'd, I'd never heard of it. And, you know, at the time, I knew what a vegan was, and I really wasn't interested. Uh, you know, it's the cognitive dissonance that many of us have around animals. But, but, you know, and I suffered that. And I, you know, I didn't, you know, I knew it didn't really, didn't, didn't, wasn't really into that. But the idea of using food as medicine just completely resonated with me. And I thought, it cannot be this simple. I mean, it just can't be. So I came back to work literally the next day. You know, I was on the faculty at WashU. I downloaded some of the original the research, ordered the China study, and within a couple of days was convinced that, in fact, you know, this, this was an evidence-based approach that I, it would be unconscionable for me not to do. So I made a commitment literally overnight to, to – go three months on a plant, whole food plant-based diet and at the same time re-engage in my rehab to get my knee in shape. So within about three months, really without any um, change in exercise other than knee strengthening, uh, this is, so this started in mid-July, by, by, by November-ish, I'd lost 30 pounds, my cholesterol went from 260 to 150, metabolic syndrome went away, sleep apnea went away, the AFib went away, and it was just, it was this miracle really it was this astounding transformation and it was really at that point that I realized that you know I thought I was a smart guy um, in med school I graduated with honors and I went to watch you for my training which is a highly respected training program 
And I thought I was this fabulous healthcare provider. But, but it turns out, you know, I wasn't a healthcare provider. I was a sick care provider. And, and when we practice sick care, you know, we, you come in with high blood, you know, you get treated just like I got treated. You, you come in with high blood pressure and, and you get a pill and the pills work great and you come back and your blood pressure's fine, but now your cholesterol's high. So you get more pills and then you come back and your cholesterol's great and those pills are working, but now you got type two diabetes. And, and so you get more pills and we just keep iterating this process until, you know, we, we just stave off disease until you have the ultimately, you know, years or months later, you know, you have a stroke or heart attack or you get Alzheimer's, you get cancer or whatever it might be. Because we've ignored the fact that the root cause of all those problems, and then doesn't just pick one, is fundamentally the same thing, right? It's the food we put in our mouth, how much exercise we get, how we deal with stress, the environmental toxins we expose ourselves to, how much sleep we get. Um, and that to practice, to be a true healthcare provider, you know, you, we really, I really needed to focus on the root cause. And so that was really my, you know, and, and it's interesting because the first few months I didn't really talk to my patients about it. I, you know, this was an internal kind of a, a, an experiment, if you will, to see, you know, to answer three questions. So how did I feel? How hard was it? And then at the end of three months, what did it do to me biometrically? And the results again were astounding. And, and, and so as I started to lose weight, I mean, patients, I lost weight so quickly, patients thought I had cancer actually. Um, and so, so, when, as I started to incorporate it into my practice, um, you know, going into the next to 2012, I was also able to start exercising and then the weight loss really picked up. And I, you know, I, by, you know, July, 2000, couldn't walk around the block. January, 2012 started running March of 2012 ran my first half marathon in, you know, 15, 20 years. And, uh, uh, ended up losing another 20 pounds or so through the next year or two, as I progressed through, you know, uh, half marathons to uh, to triathlons to a half Ironman triathlon to marathons and 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 on and on and so um, you know it, it's really been astounding and patients who have engaged similar to, you know to what I have done have had the same really miraculous results it, it's astounding when this opportunity came to move to DC you know, it was a struggle in St Louis because the resources weren't there we had no there was really no clinical plant based dietitians the diabetologist around thought I had lost they 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 Literally, I would have patients come in and see me who had, had type 2 diabetes for years on insulin and metformin and whatever, would go on a plant-based diet, come off their insulin, go follow up with their, diabetes, their, their endocrinologist, and he would say, well, wow, you look great. How are you doing? He says, well, I went on a plant-based diet. I stopped my insulin. Who told you to do that? Well, my interns. Well, you need a new intern because that's malpractice. So, so yeah, so that's crazy. Um, it's crazy. And so when this opportunity came to, to, to move to DC and work with Neil um, and set up, you know, really uh, shift the paradigm of, of healthcare from this sick care system we traditionally operate in to a true healthcare system and help build that from the ground up. It, it was so exciting. And, and in fact, I, today is uh, literally my one year anniversary of being here in, in uh, DC. Love it. Okay. So, so you, I think you hit on something really important here, which is that, you know, uh, you, your directives now are to uh, teach people how to adopt a plant-based diet so they can get, they can basically treat the root cause of their disease, whether their disease is diabetes, whether it's hypertension, whether it's high cholesterol, whether it's cardiovascular disease, you name it. So you're now teaching people how to migrate towards a plant-based diet. And yet you still get this, this, uh, this feedback from the medical community that what you're doing is malpractice, right? Does that deter you from doing it? And is there a way around that? Well, I think, you know, if you think about the resistance we have to this whole, to the idea of food as medicine in general, um, and, and particularly plant-based nutrition, you know, we've really institutionalized this idea 360 degrees all the way around. You know, in medical school, I learned nothing about nutrition. The little bit, the little couple hours I had was really wasn't nutrition, it was about biochemistry. It was, you know, these are vitamins, these are proteins. If you don't get enough protein, you get Kashiwara's disease, which, you know, no one, I've never, certainly never seen in my clinical practice. If you don't get enough certain vitamins, you get, you know, berry, berry or whatever. The evidence that we're, you know, we try to practice evidence-based medicine. So, so the evidence that's presented around the, the treatment of chronic disease, much of that is generated with, with funding through the pharmaceutical industry. So it's, it's heavily in this kind of treatment mode. Um, you know, there's no kale society who's going to going to fund some huge research study to, to do a double blind control study against insulin and type two diabetics. Um, so we train doctors 
fundamentally to operate in this paradigm of treatment. Um, we allow pharmaceutical advertising. And, and when 60% of the US population is either overweight or obese, and a similar number either has type 2 diabetes or prediabetes, 70% is on at least one drug, 20% is on five drugs, it's normal to expect to take a drug for a chronic condition. And then you see these ads on TV, which tell you, oh, your blood pressure's high, here's a pill, you got erectile dysfunction, here's the blue pill, you got reflux, here's the purple pill. And we've changed generations of doctors who are more than willing to prescribe that medicine. And then you shift over to you know, agricultural policy and, and subsidies, crop subsidies, and you know, cheese and dairy and, and meat and monocrop agriculture, high fruit, which leads to high cheap you know, soda because of high fructose corn syrup the labeling laws that allow us to hide these, these highly processed ingredients in the labels of food, the influence of industry on the dietary guidelines, which you know, PCRM has done a, a tremendous work in, in, in kind of unraveling. Those guidelines set school lunch programs, which is where our kids learn their, their dietary habits. So, so you know, we, it, the whole system really is, 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 is set up to make this difficult. And, and I think that you know, the, the way I, your question, does this, you know, I feel enlightened by the knowledge I have, not, not, not encumbered, not, 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 I don't feel like I'm pushing up against a, a wall because patients increasingly are finding and are coming to us knowing this. We, I think that we, um, um, You've seen this huge movement, gra grassroots movements around plant-based nutrition through through movies like Forks Over Knives and Dr. Greger's work, and you know the list goes on. There's a whole you know Dr. Warnish. There's a whole list that, that work that Neil's done at, at PCRM. So I think people are starting to understand, and and I think there's a, enough grassroots effort that 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 the demand from the consumer side, from the patient side, is starting to drive change in the medical community. The plant-based nutrition conference, you know, this is our fourth, it was the fourth year. The first year there was 200 people. This year there's almost 1,000. These are healthcare professionals coming to learn about the importance of plant-based nutrition and health. American College of Lifestyle Medicine, which, which fundamentally, you know, looks at this, this shift of root cause, same kind of growth in membership. I mean, so we're starting to see, um, um, a, I think, f a fundamentally profound shift in, in attitudes and and you know part of my job in fact you know Daniel Patrick one in has this great quote we can all have our own opinions uh, but we can't have our own facts mm -hmm. and so you know in, as part of our efforts here in not only educating patients uh, we have a robust outreach program you know I we speak I speak Neil speaks the other clinicians go out and speak we speak at, at local uh, uh, employers we speak at local veg fest we have been invited to do grand rounds. We give scientific talks. We actually are, uh, after the first year, are gonna have rotations through uh, Bernard Medical Center uh, for medical students and residents both uh, to, show, to teach them the importance of this. So, you know, we're, we're trying to change the world one, you know, one step at, the, at a time.